So today should be a little bit interesting. We're gonna be picking up another project car. And it's kind of an interesting one that I've wanted to do for some time now. But of course, in my infinite wisdom, I ended up buying something sight unseen. It was cheap. It doesn't even have an active status, but uh, we're gonna see if we can keep it from being parted out or from the crusher. Does anybody actually like wiping windows? Here, you wanna watch this skill? Yeah, okay, it's been a while, but I worked in a gas station. Mm. Don't worry about that. We're just running out of battery for whatever reason. 448, 139. Things are gonna be a little bit different in this video. I made potentially another bad financial mistake, but it involves a BMW, so I think it's still a good financial mistake. Long story short, I was left unsupervised on Facebook Marketplace. I decided to uh, give a scroll and found a uh, red BMW. Now, not just any red BMW, a very damaged barn find BMW. It's a 1987 BMW 325e, I believe, that uh, has been sitting in a barn and unoccupied for seven years, but I think the last time it was run was 2007, so it's been, what, 14, 15 years? We're gonna head out to Invermere, BC to pick up the vehicle. Now this vehicle is a 1987, again, 325E Coupe, factory five-speed, factory ABS car. It does have the, what I consider a smog motor. I'm sure BMW calls it something different, but uh, it's definitely definitely a smog motor. It only revs to 4,500. But the guy has seven bins full of parts and uh, spare motor. So he, not, on, not only does he have uh, the majority, I would say 95% of the parts that we need for the vehicle, he has a spare motor. Now the original motor, 120 PS, so roughly the same in horsepower. And uh, the other one with the high compression that I'll refresh while it's out, 170. The majority of it's stock. He did do suspension. He did start refreshing it to make it a nice clean cruiser. So I will benefit from that, which is nice. He seems like he wouldn't mind helping with any questions and stuff, which is great. And take it for inspection and probably add it to the fleet. Now I have a one, a three, an X5, five series and whatever else. And uh, this will be vehicle number 10 or 11, a lot, 10 and a half. No, 10 and three quarters. Yeah, quarter being go-kart, half being motorcycle, whatever. Anyways, yeah, I still have a motorcycle that I forgot about. We're about 20 minutes out before we pick up Taylor, so hopefully he has uh, coffee ready. I'm gonna blast some country and just uh, pretend like I'm a long haul truck driver with the diesel turbo noises. See you guys in a bit. Hi. Hi. Oh, coffee. Great. Are you excited? Yeah. I'm kinda, kinda not. I'm excited. If you get regrets, I'll just buy it. Okay. If I get regrets, he's just gonna buy it. That's accurate. All right, we're all loaded up with the trailer with the sketchy tires, love it. Is this all still good? Yep. Pins putting in work. $4 uh, AliExpress steel pin. Okay, well, let's, uh get on the road so we're stuck behind idiots because uh people like to cut you off and go 20 under but that's okay we're not in a rush the excitement of picking up this project is sticking around and lingering so that that will be our solace for this trip and uh you can see we picked up the skeletal child here he decided he wanted to tag along and fortunately the ac is working today it wasn't tomorrow but helicopter I need to get some sort of a funding. Like when you spend time with the, with the needy, like the special needs, I guess we'll kind of give you a recap as to why we're buying this vehicle. I've personally always wanted an E30. I wanted to start with a clean shell. I didn't want something that needed a bunch of bodywork. The chassis is nice. He sent a couple of pictures, pinch welds are clean. 
floor pan's clean, it has the factory undercoating. It basically, it sat in a barn for a number of years, it sat in a field under a covered tarp, barney thing for a couple of years. Yeah, it was written off, I believe, in 2007, so that's the last time it was on the road and registered. Taylor, I think, is a little excited as well. I wasn't as excited, a bit apprehensive, but it's a decent project, and after talking to the current owner that we're getting it off of, it sounded pretty good. I think it seems like a great car with a great story kind of thing, so a, a cool car is cool, sure, but when it comes with a cool story, that's even better. You know, bar fine, sat for 20 years, it's been stored well. Rust free somehow? Rust free, like everywhere rust free. I, I think it's just... Factory a, five speed? It's a good story. Picking up speed for now, somehow the diesel is uh, above 120, the fuel mileage tanks. Below 120, it's in its sweet spot. So I think we're just gonna kick back, set the cruise control at just slightly above the speed limit and keep on going. For a red car. I think it's that one. It is that one? Yep. Cool. Oh. Sweet. Hey, I see it. All right, ladies and gents, we're back. On the road, we've got the E30 in tow. So far, so good. We will get it back to the garage and assess it a bit and see what we're looking at. I'm excited. I think it's a, a sweet car, sweet story, nice color. It's gonna be uh, something very fun, very different, very unique, that is kind of out of our comfort zone which is a really nice change up from just doing N54s, N55s, eight-speed swaps. I'm blasting it with rocks. Tony's already giving it a uh, sandblast because he's that excited. No, I need to clarify. There's a bunch of gravel. Here, show them the gravel. There was a truck that came and threw a bunch of gravel, so we have to do 10K an hour so I don't sandblast the uh, open engine of the E30. He just wants to sandblast it. No. No, I think we're both really excited for something that's a little bit of a different change up. Something that we haven't done out of our comfort zones. Um, and just doesn't start with an N for the motor. I, I think we're all a little over that. Something manual, not an eight speed swapped. Something kind of easy and classic is what we were aiming for. Breath of fresh air. Yeah. It's gonna be nice, so. Definitely excited to get it home and see what we do with it. We're going slow through the rocks. We're probably gonna stop and grab a bite really quick and go to the bathroom and head back. Well, this is kind of neat. Look at that. This was, I don't know, Marble Creek, Canyon, some place that we ended up pulling over. Uh, so far, so good. X5 is doing great. I don't have a whole hell of a lot of battery, but we're gonna give the E30 a once over just to make sure it's all good. Straps are still super tight. This one, super, super tight. Everything here, you good? I'm super surprised at how nice the paint is, at least on this side. There's a couple little dings and nothing crazy. Even has a tow hitch. So maybe next time we'll pull a, pull a vehicle with the E30. No. I'm kidding, I'm not gonna pull nothing with the E30. We're gonna go water the greenery and get back on the road to Calgary. Well, 
We've got the E30 back in the BMW barn, if we can call it that, I'm not sure. Dojo is already taken by another handsome fellow. We'll call it the barn. Ironically, this was a barn find, so a little bit of history behind it. It was originally, after talking to the owner, a California car. So it came up from California, and that explains why it's super clean. It was involved in a bit of an incident where it was hit by, I think it's a UPS truck just on the corner here. So it was pushed in, crumpled a bit. It ended up dinging up the rad support. We did end up getting a rad support. Actually, I'll kind of go over that really quick. It is super satisfying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the back, we've got a Sony 10 disc magazine. I'm pretty curious about what's hiding in there. We do have a rad support. He said this is a BMW rad support that's worth a small fortune spare steering wheel it looks like this one is a little rougher than what's in there no rust after an initial review just a little bit of surface stuff on the battery area now closing this very 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 satisfying quarter panel super clean yeah super super clean new shocks new brakes if it shows they just have a little bit of surface rust and while we're down here Rockers are super, super nice. Now, you guys tell me what you can see because I won't be able to see it. But when I took an initial look, the underbody looked super clean as well. The only real rust I noticed was on the door here. A couple of chips where it's starting to rust and right down on the corner. Not a big deal. Over here, it's pretty nice as well. We'll clean that up before we throw a fender on there. It ended up getting smacked on the front, so that was all pushed in. But in 2007, this car was backed into and written off because they were worthless back then. It ended up sitting in a barn since 2007, so in the middle of nowhere. And it's one of those like three-walled things with a slanted roof where hay bales sit for the horses. And as a result, this didn't get rusted, it didn't have the element sitting on it just got dusty and it looked good. Now, fortunately, because of that, this is a, an extremely clean shell. He ended up moving it about five years ago, so we didn't dig it out of a field. He moved it five years ago to his father's garage in Invermere, BC, and about a year ago, he last was tinkering on it. We haven't heard it run, but we did end up getting a spare motor over there sitting right next to the N54. I'll go over that in a little bit here. That one's locked up. This one seems to be okay. We'll throw a little bit of time at it because I'd like to hear it run and see how it is. But my understanding is between the two motors, you can build a 2.7 stroker and it's ready for a turbo. That'd be kind of neat. I don't know if we're gonna end up doing that. Uh, maybe I'll do a bit of a Screamer NA build, inline six with an inline six Screamer build, I should say, with a headlight duct, like a velocity stack kind of thing. That would be super neat. Or if you mix match the two of them, I guess, because this is a 325E, so it has the 27 super torquey, but super low red line motor. You take this block and you made it with that cylinder head and all the peripherals and take manifold and stuff. Since we have the both of them, we have the engine harness, we have the ECU. I guess it ends up picking up quite a bit of power. You make more than a regular 325I. That's what that motor is. And People make about 190 to the motor. Factory five-speed car. I did confirm it does have a 4.1 uh, LSD rear end, which is wicked. So maybe we'll either NA kind of build screamer or a small turbo and maybe like four or five pounds of boost, which I think would be neat as well. The front end won't be too, too bad. Knock on wood or knock on rust, that's fine. The window itself, the dad ended up saying, well, because the battery is disconnected, you won't be able to roll it up. I quickly learned two things. One, it's actually electric window, and two, there's no window. Well, I guess I learned three things. So not only is the window broken, but I tried to figure out what was in the back of it, and ironically, in the bubble wrap is another glass. So we're good there. Other than those items, we ended up getting a bunch of stuff from the previous owner. He essentially just threw his shed at me. We ended up getting 
the cylinder head, I think this is a 325i, so dual valve spring, single cam kind of deal. A bunch of bins full of really, really, really cool stuff. A lot of factory parts, 325i gauge cluster, all of the plastics, molding, so forth. Uh, that's N54 stuff, but that's for a later date. Ignore compression tester, that's for other miserable things. Second air box with an airflow meter and bumper with fog lights, the trim and the hood. Sorry, not hood, the fender. So that is the factory passenger fender off of this vehicle. What's kind of promising, I don't know if it's gonna show up. It looks like he tried to polish it just a hair here and this might polish up really nice. So I'm hoping maybe I can find a red front end. If not, we do have a silver hood, which will bite us some time. Maybe it'll get painted black, wrapped, so forth. And this blue beast, I have to kind of give it a bit of a rundown. So this here ended up giving us no issues on the trip other than when we got home. Now, when we ended up getting home, we learned something really quick. So Taylor and I, as we were driving into Calgary, we were both kind of asking ourselves, why does it smell like potato? Like yeasty, old potato. Dropped Taylor off, drove home, and we got here and it ended up, the smell ended up flooding the alley. Now, the weird part was, we couldn't figure it out until we started to pull all the stuff out. We figured maybe it was a, like something in the bin that was in the back of the vehicle. And ironically, I put my hand on the, the plastic cover for the battery and it was scalding hot. Pull it off and then we realized it was actually the batter, battery gassing. So somebody who will stay unnamed, <clears throat> midget child may have forgotten to put the vent for the battery back in. In the process of towing the vehicle, the cell or one of the cells ended up dropping in the battery. It started to overcharge, overheat, and it swelled. It looked like a, almost like a peanut kind of thing. And sure enough, it was gassing. So we were both sick for the next day, uh, next day following. But uh, yeah, that was, that was an interesting experience. Otherwise it did great. And uh, I guess I'll get to these two things here right beside me or behind me. We have the N54 that's originally out of the one series and we have the M20 B25. If you look from the side, uh, it's a bit of a weird angle. Dimension wise, they look pretty good. This one's a front sump, that's a rear sump, but it's starting to give me some interesting ideas. This, we could either make a stroke or turbo kind of thing or one of these into here and figure something out. Old tech, new tech, it's really nice to see and really interesting to see the differences. Cam ch chain tensioner, obviously this one's a chain, your vano solenoids and so forth. And then for here, you have pretty archaic stuff. You just have the old alternator, the harmonic balancer with the wheel. There should be a sensor here somewhere. Nope, it's not here. There's usually a sensor here that picks up on the teeth that determines the timing itself. Water pump, old distributor style with the coils, whereas this does not have that, it has coil packs on top, super simple stuff. It looks like an N54 style thermostat, which is kind of neat with the sensors and that ironically is a fuel pressure regulator. So this had a conventional setup where it was return style, what, well, what it appears to be return style and a dipstick. Does it have oil? Uh, yeah, it looks like it has oil. And the best part about that is with the oil, and the oil pan, if the turbo's over here, <clears throat> I mean, if we decide to do something with it, we could put a bung right there and drain it super easily. I really wanted an E30 for the longest time and I'm super stoked that I'm able to actually get one now. There's a few pretty neat things with this if I haven't gone over a ton already. It's an ABS car with power steering and it has four wheel disc. I thought the 325E was some kind of base model, slightly garbage version, but being that it's factory manual in line six with all the features, even though maybe I will disable the ABS, it's pretty neat. I'm gonna start looking for a bunch of parts, but I ended up getting this, which is kind of neat. Chassis mount shifter from a company that I can't pronounce. Giga stick, some gig, I don't know, someplace. It's got a Delrin shift knob and it's wicked. Stay tuned for the E30 build. We're gonna try and start it next episode and see what it sounds like. But that's all for this one. Feel free to like and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one.
on a cross corner. Cut the apex. Power out. Tap the curb. But not actually. These curbs are different. Audi. F you. Just kidding. He looks like a nice guy.